Hey, everybody. Welcome to this episode of The Integrated Entrepreneur. I am here with my co-host, Keith. Keith, what's going on? It's another beautiful day, bro. Yeah. Sunday fun day was yesterday, Father's Day. Today's shit's gone crazy Monday. Usually happens that way. Yep. You know? Even when I come into the office and handle stuff over the weekend, it doesn't matter. Because I know, know there's something that happens. Even if I was here late into Sunday night. There's something that magical that happens between Monday at 2 a.m. and Monday at 4 a.m. that just creates massive chaos every week. Yeah, I call it the Yahtzee Cup because whatever it is, it just jumbles up whatever it was supposed to be. Yep. And now you're stuck. We're trying to figure it the fuck out. Yep, there you go. Yeah, I like it's, it. Uh, for me, it's uh, between 11.59 and 12 is, is typically <laughs> when shit falls apart. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, so that's a good segue. We just had Father's Day. Let's talk about the hardest job on the planet, uh, planet being a parent. Was it All a right. parent or a husband? Ooh, that's a good Ooh. question. Ooh. Here's, here, dude, here, here's, here's the reality. My wife, w- so I, I'm- oh, Don't in, get killed right I'm now. Not, I'm not, actually, I'm going the other way with it. I'm incredibly blessed. And my wife allows me to do everything that I do and makes it super easy for me to do it. So I don't have a lot of the same challenges that most other people, especially most other people in our peer group. And when I say peer group, I mean all the guys running a business. I don't really have that type of uh, issue with my wife, right? My wife is a fucking rock star. So I'm not going to get in trouble with it. I'm not just saying it because it's on the show. She honestly is the reasoning behind most of my success because she allows me to focus on what I have to focus on and takes away all the other stuff that, you know, it's on my plate from, let's say, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. I'll say Deanna's the same, dude. Now. She yeah. didn't used to understand it, but now I think she's taking it for the team. Yeah. Tremendously. I, and sure. I think I, I think there's a ramp-up period, man. Like It's like I, eight I, years. Okay. Yeah. But <laughs> no, no, I, I mean that. Kids, right? You got kids in there too. That yes. Grew up three, there, you know. Yeah. Three of them. But here, here's, here's why I think there's a ramp up period because I have heard a lot of people, let, let's not kid ourselves. When people get in that personal development cycle, right? They're usually not in, getting into that with their partner or with their spouse. Right. Okay. And that does create an imbalance in the relationship when one person's constantly trying to improve and then one person is kind of getting feeling distant, right? Because they're not involved. Right. And so I think one of the separators or, dif- or differences is I always told my wife why I was going to them, what I'm trying to get out of them. And I've also brought her to a couple of them that she went to, she had fun and she would go back. But she also realizes she's not really missing out. It's almost entirely business. Yeah. And that has helped uh, tremendously whenever I want to go away to uh, Arate Summit or a workshop or something. That's always been very helpful. Yeah, for sure. Well, I didn't mean to derail the the, the segment, but it's important to. It is huge. Well, how many people do we know that we're not going to name names? It is a problem if they have to go away or go to an event. Like, not everybody gets free reign to do that. Dude, no. Uh, and a lot of people ask me that. Like, oh, man, how do you travel so much? And, and you know, you guys are still, like, married. Yeah. Period. There, there's definitely a give and take to it, right? Yeah. And I think then she, she and your wife stomach more of the, the brutalness of that than, yeah. <laughs> than you and yeah. I do. We got a different stress, but it's not kids, dinner, school, activities, Correct. fucking the whole nine yards. Yeah, you're right. And I got and I think that's one of the biggest advantages I have, to be honest with you, is that I can do that and yeah. I don't I don't ever have to worry. It's Super helpful. helpful. Very helpful. It's very helpful. So Marissa, if you're listening to this one, thank you. I love you. You're crushing it. Keep brownie it brownie going. points for Ronald. Bra- brownie points, of course. I need all the brownie points I can get. I have a newborn at home, dude. I don't even have to do anything. I come home and I know it was crazy that day. I know. Yeah. I usually carry a negative balance in my brownie point container. 
I could, I could see that. Yeah. I can see that for sure. Yeah. It I is mean, nice. So, but yeah, dude. So how, how was your father's day? Good? Yeah. We honestly relaxed. I got a little bit of stuff done. I wanted to, we just barbecued and, um, I had a very nice day with the kids. What about you? We went on the boat most of the day, cooked out, same thing. That's, that's all. Key. I get it. That's awesome. Low key. So, so yeah, I, you mentioned it. Second hardest job in the world is being a dad. The first one, yeah. in my opinion, is being a husband. Yeah. The third one is being a business owner. Yeah. But being being dad and business owner leaves very little time to be the husband. Mm-hmm. It's tough. I agree with that. <laughs> it's tough. Two, two and three make one even harder. Yes. Yeah. And then you got one that's what? A month? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That one's easy. You still wrap it up in a blanket and call it a day. Yeah. yeah that's for, for right now, yes. Although she did have to have a procedure. She was tongue-tied. That was oh. miserable. Yeesh. Yeah. So let's, let's talk about that, being a parent. Because I think, first off, let's just call it what it is. Not one style fits everybody. Every kid is different. Every parent's different. So... Take what we're saying here with a grain of salt. My kids are going to be different than your kids. They're going to be different than Keith's kids. And me and Keith are pretty similar. Okay? So the same shit doesn't work for everybody. Mm. Okay? Like, I like when you see, oh, yeah, my kids, they respond really well to gentle parenting. That's amazing. My kids don't. My kids respond to just sheer terror and, uh, you know, my – actually, that's not true. My kids are – very well behaved out in public. When they get home, they're a little crazy. But again, it's more about the time and the quality of time that you spend with them. And this is something that uh, I have gotten much better with. I know that when you're running a business, it is very hard to separate when you're at work and when you're home. Because there's so many times that work bleeds over into what you're currently doing. Everybody deals with it. However, one of the biggest shifts I made was being super present and focusing on being super present, meaning I am wherever my feet are. Um, I make sure that when I come in the house, my phone is not attached to my hand or on the side of my head. I want to make sure that when I step come in, I can say hello to everybody, ask them how their day went, and actually have a meaningful conversation and give them a hug. I know that's not the biggest thing in the world, but when before I can tell you that my wife told me several times, I'm talking to the kids and I have my phone in my hand, talk to the kids, have my phone in my hand. And I know that when people do that to me, I know they're not paying attention, not registering. And for a kid, that is very, very, very damaging. So I try not to do that. I also try to block out time where it's just me and them and we're doing some type of fun activity whether it's building or anything else that they like to do, Legos, reading, working out, you name it. I try to keep it where if we're doing an activity, it's outside or it doesn't involve a TV. That also has been very helpful. Um, Keith, your kids are a little bit older. You have different views on them. Yeah, now I can't, I can't talk to them without them staring at their phone. So the roles have reversed. Yeah, right. And I'm like, I'll quit paying the fucking bill. Put it down. <laughs> I, I guess that that's where you have to go, and that probably works. Yeah. No. Mike, uh, dude, we're – it's interesting because Dan and I have this conversation all the time when we're communicating about, like, our house is the hangout spot. Yeah. Kids want to come here. They want to hang out here. Our kids want their friends to come here. They don't really want to go anywhere. And I think it's because of the culture that we have with our kids here, which is like, is we're very open. We're very open. We don't like, I, my dad was a bit more aggressive mm-hmm. and I was always like, fuck that. I'm not going to do that if I have kids. Mm-hmm. Then I had girls. So you can't really do that unless you want to produce strippers, right? Yeah. Uh, or chicks with dad problems. And I don't want either one of them. Um, not that there's nothing, there's anything wrong with stripping. Okay, guys, don't don't god dang lose your head. Uh, it's it's an art. I get it. Uh, but 
we're super open. So like our rules with my oldest is like, Hey, you want to be stupid and try drinking You're come tell me, mm-hmm. like, sit down and drink. You want to smoke weed? Come tell me and sit down and smoke it right now before these people lose their mind, meth and, and heroin, probably a little overkill, not going to like produce that on the kitchen table and let her you rip. Uh, but there, there's a, for me, like weed and alcohol now where you can get at a goddamn gas station. So what does it matter? Right. Yep. Now, now you have to teach the kids how to be, uh, smart and, and fucking have a little bit of common sense when they're doing the shit. Yeah. So for us, it was like, Hey, you want to vape? Come tell me. Right. And the, and the reasoning behind it is like, I want you to know that for whatever it is, you can always come to me or your mom and say, Hey, I want to try this. And there will be no trouble. The yeah. moment you do that shit out in public and then drive home or get in trouble or buy some shit that puts you in a hospital or kills you mm-hmm. because you, you hit a, you know, a vape pen that had nothing but fucking fentanyl on it. Like you don't, you just don't know anymore. Right. Yeah. And, uh, so so I had to say this, we're, we're way fucking different, way more casual, more laid back. Our kids are really not ever in trouble, yep. but that's also produced like a, a super open communication line, which it, I think is you. Sometimes I don't like, sometimes I'm like, don't ever say that shit again. I'll slap you. Like, what are you doing? Sometimes it's very beneficial, right? Hey dad, uh, I found this weed pen. Uh, yeah. fucking enough, my friend brought it over and left it here. I didn't know what to do. And not, you know, like, yeah, there will be times. Uh, so for us, it's being super open. And I know that, you know, that'll probably drive a bunch of people crazy, but, uh, we've just always been open and accepting of whatever it is. And for us, it's worked well and it's 13, 13 and 12, and they both do great in school. And Yo, you want my opinion on that? Honestly, I, uh, again, everyone's different, but my parents had that. Okay. My parents were, Hey, if you want to do this, do that. Come tell me basically the rules were do well in school, do well in hockey. Don't get anyone pregnant. Don't go to jail. You're good. And, um, it really worked well for me. And I will tell you, especially between the ages, let's say 15 and 25, my house was the hangout spot. It saved me from getting into a lot of trouble. It saved my friends from getting into a lot of trouble. Mm-hmm. And I had an amazing relationship uh, with my mom and uh, with my dad at that at those times. So that's all you can ask for, was, man. Yeah, that's all I can ask for these days. And I'll have that policy as well. Like I, I tell my kids, if you're ever at somebody's house playing or whatever, and you need me to come get you, no questions asked. Just say something about. Uh, did you forget the pickles or don't forget the pickles, right? Yeah. We have a, a keyword, right? And that they've never had to use it, but I always remind them. And I think that really helps as well. Uh, <clears throat> and so my kids being younger, a little, little different, but I want them. I want, here's something I've noticed. A lot of times you can tell a kid over and over and over again something. And it's not really what you say, it's what they see you doing. All right. right. I've told this story numerous times on this show, but I think it's, it's worth repeating. Two of the greatest things that I've seen my son accomplish were the results of him watching what I do. Okay. And the first one was he's both of my kids. One's nine, one's six. Uh, they both work out without being asked and they do it every morning and it's all body weight stuff. And then they'll go and train and do sports specific things. And they started this because they saw me doing 75 hole. Okay. Mm-hmm. Dad, yep. I want to work out with you. I want to do this. I want to do that. So I teach them and then they do it. And then I give them what they should do each morning. That never would have worked had I just told them, Hey, you should work out every day. Okay, they saw me working out twice a day. They wanted part of it, wanted to be like that. And that's the byproduct. The other thing is my son started a business and he's learning more about business than he'll ever learn in school. And he did that because when he saw me working, he asked questions and then he, he got into 3D printing. And then I said, listen, I'll give you a loan to get all the equipment. And then you start the business and you have to pay me back. And he's been doing that and he loves it. And that is his focus. And it is actually teaching him more about school. And because he started a business, there's something called Khan Academy. 
uh, Khan Academy. Guy was on Ed Milet's podcast. It's a free uh, education system. Goes through K to like college. My kids started doing that because they want to learn more about business and schools app. Right? It's those little things and those separators that if you can teach them, that'll, that'll stick with them long after you're six feet under. Right? And that's what's super, super, super important. Um, that was great. You know, both of those things. And that's yeah. caught, not taught. Yep. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> there. You know, we've all heard that there's no book, right? You're going to have 50 million different variations of how you parent. Yeah. I think a lot of it comes down to responsiveness of your kids as you start to discipline them growing up. And you kind of can get it, right? To your point, passive may not work. You may need to get in their ass a little bit, right? Yeah. And that may work. For me, you had to get my ass some. Which was why my dad was the way he was, right? Yeah. He, I taught him how to parent, to deal with me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Yeah. That's so, true. but what I think too, like, is is yeah, so much time goes by, and then we forget what we went through as kids. The good shit. We always remember. Oh, I don't ever want to teach my kid to do this or do that or da 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 da. We never remember all the good shit, right? Yeah. And then we never pull the good shit in. So, I had a lot of grace a lot of freedom, which is what we want our kids to have. But I also don't want my kids running the streets because they're, you know, 90 pound little girls. Yeah. So there's that whole thing. Uh, and then they have way more access to shit than you and I did. Right. Yes. Uh, at a quicker pace. So there's a lot of things to navigate there. I think the, the biggest component of it is just respectful boundaries uh, yeah. have to be set. And then you got to really understand the love language of your kid, uh, which is huge. I know a lot of people read the five love languages for like your spouse relationship, yeah. but there's actually a children's book on your kids uh, and, and how to understand their love language. That's pretty powerful. Uh, and then correlating that with their communication style. Like and that. for us, it was just like, hey, you, you have all the room in the world to run until you don't. Yep. And then, you know, understand it. I will end it if I need to, but until, you know, just do what you're told and, and how you're supposed to act. And to your point earlier, you can be a fool here and talk shit at home. I'm good with that. Yep. Don't do that shit out there though. No. That's for I, me and your mom to do. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Dude, it's, it, I'll tell you what, the shit talking, that thing's real. My six year old, I told him, I said, Ronan, I love you very much. And I want you to know, I'm saying this to you to help you. I said, you're very much like your father. You're very much like me. <laughs> and I'm telling you, you, you better keep going with martial arts and you better be an amazing fighter because the amount of shit that you talk, you're going to get into a lot of fights. Mm. And I just told him like it is. Like, I know it because he, he likes to push other people's buttons. He pushes his older brother's friend's buttons, no. right? There's a four-year age gap. Like, hey, you better be really good at fighting if you're going to have that sharper tongue. Because your shit talking <laughs> ratio versus your body weight ratio really is a tough <laughs> yeah. one. Right? Yeah, it's not there. No, he's getting it. He's closing that gap. He's closing that gap. He's sweet, but once in a while he has some great one-liners. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So that that's that's been interesting, and I guess it only gets more challenging as they get older. Is what you're telling me. Uh, it, it, if you want it to, sure. Okay. Right. And, and here's the thing, uh, nothing changes, but the, the, the thing, right. The thing is always different, right. Whether you're in trouble, it's a little bit more trouble than it was when you were six. Like yeah. the object is different. The com the conversation is just about a different thing, a different item, a different yeah. dude or kid talking shit or teacher doing yeah. this or so it's, it's just a little progression. Um, you know, but it's not, to me, it's not harder. It's becoming more fun because now I get to increase my shit talking, right? I get to like be a little bit more sophisticated in the things that we're doing, which is cool. Yeah. Um, not that my kids are unsophisticated, but it's no longer like, Hey dad, we're in a bounce house. Like now we get to go do cool, like almost adult shit together. 
Yeah. Right. So I'm looking forward. Like, I hate the fact that they're, dude, they're already in high school or middle school, which yeah. goes quick. Um, but I'm also looking forward to the day where like, it's, it's two adults hanging out, not with still the vibe of kid parent, yep. but it's a little bit more, uh, my speed. I got it. So here's one. You want some controversy in this motherfucker? Let's sure. get some controversy going. How are you teaching your kids to navigate the political climate? Uh, that's a good one. So, and, and, and I played the fifth as a, a perfectly acceptable answer. Yeah. I, t- I teach them right and wrong. I don't teach them political. I teach them some of the political concepts, but I teach them how things should work. And then I try to teach them how things work now, but they're kind of fucked up and broken. But do I go full divide right now? I go, Hey, this is, I, and again, it's, it's tailored to each child based on their age or what they would understand. But I don't sure. drill down. I say, this is what we stand for. This is what we believe in. This is why. But I want them to think for themselves, right? I don't yeah. want to tell them what to do. I want to tell them what I do and tell them why I do it and then let them come to their own conclusions if I know. What about we you? just talk common sense. I know it's a hard thing to grasp, but... Yeah, we, uh, we just say, hey, here's the thing they're voting on and here's what would be common sense and let's see who does what. Yep. And now my oh, kids yeah. talk about this. It's not necessary. I mean, they're, they're... They live on the river. Every other boat has a fuck Joe Biden flag yeah. behind it, right? So they see that and say that. Yep. And repeat. My, my uh, kids too. <laughs> so they have that going for them. Uh, but it's, it's not necessarily like who are we voting for? It's what do we believe in? That's kind yeah. of the communication that we're doing. And we don't watch the news here, so they have no idea what the fuck's going on. Yeah. Uh, Same. I'm sure they know more than I think they know, but with TikTok and all the shit that the kids have access to now, but yeah. we're not watching news for jacks at four 30 in the afternoon for supper. Yeah. Uh, I'm with you. Yeah. Yeah. So, My, I, I think with the ages too, like, I think my concern is I want my kids to understand why I do things and why I'm not always home. And that's a big focus when I am home is like, Hey guys, when I go to work, when I'm traveling, this is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to help small businesses stay and alive and grow and thrive. Right. I'm trying to help other business owners and I'm doing that because that's who employs most Americans. So that is, and I, I let them know, Hey, this is my mission. This is why I do it. This is who I'm trying to help, and that's why I'm not always there. But when I'm here, I'm here with you, and we're going to do fun stuff. And I always have stuff in mind, or I try to. And that's, that's as far as parenting goes, that's one of my bigger concerns right now because of how much time I am not home for. However, I do try to mirror their sporting events, which is great. So they both train martial arts. I will literally go and train with them in their class and then when they come home i'll work with them do some pad work with them and then hockey uh i'm not their coach right now but i i play they come to my games and i go to all theirs and i think that i love doing that i have a blast with it and for me at least with their ages now that's really my concern are they doing what they should are they developing physically mentally are they turning into great people and do they know how much I love them and I care about them? Uh, and I try to be as present as possible when I'm doing that. You know what I mean? That's all you can do, bro. That's it. All you that's can it. do. That's it. Any any other uh, parting words you want to leave our guests with? No, man. Uh, you know, don't cook bacon naked. Yeah, that's uh, a good one. Uh, that's it. That's all I got on this Monday, dude. I'm going fresh out of everything. Guys, do 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 us a favor, okay? Because <laughs> that's such a good hashtag. Please, I would really appreciate if everyone that shared this show would leave the hashtag don't cook bacon naked. That's it. Do that. It's a new trend, bro. I'm about to become a millionaire off yeah. of that. Don't cook bacon naked. We could make some awesome, awesome shirts for that. Probably couldn't sell them online, but I got some really good ideas. Yeah, we might be silenced, and, and you know, I'm pretty sure we are. By the way, really, that last That's well, the last two episodes were pretty, pretty out there. All right, guys, you heard it here. Share it. Don't leave bacon naked. Don't
Don't cook bacon naked. Tongue, tongue tied. Catch you on the next one, guys. See you.